Hello everyone, and welcome to the next edition of the Holland Land Office Museum's Artifact Video Series. My name is Ryan Duffy and I'm the director of the museum, and this week we're going to talk about uh, a unique individual from Genesee County's history, and one that had a connection with the greatest show on earth. Uh, so this week we're going to talk about a man named Joseph Burke, uh, who was born in Ireland but eventually came to settle at least part of the year uh, right here in Alexander, New York, uh, at his home in Somerville. Now Joseph Burke was a Outstanding musician in his own right, actually began performing at the age of three uh, and eventually made it to the United States uh, in his teen years to perform in places like New York City, Albany, and other big cities. Uh, but his uh, connection to uh, The Greatest Show by P.T. Barnum uh, starts in 1850 when he's invited to play with Jenny Lind, who is known as the Swedish Nightingale. And often a lot of the performers that he performed with would come back with him to Alexander and visit him during the summer and stay with him sometimes. So he had uh, a strong connection with some of the biggest names of the mid-19th century in terms of entertainment and brought him right back here to Genesee County. So we're going to study a little bit more about his life and his interactions with Jenny Lind and other uh, parts of P.T. Barnum's uh, traveling marvelous circus and uh, other acts and uh, show the connection here to Genesee County. Joseph Burke was born near Galway, Ireland, and was discovered as a child prodigy very early on. He began performing at the age of three as an actor and a violinist. At five, he was starring as Hamlet and other Shakespeare roles at the Dublin Theatre Royale. He made his American debut at 11 on November 22, 1830, in New York City. Joseph's travel soon brought him to western New York. He was so enthralled with the area that he decided to make his home away from home here in Genesee County. In 1846, he bought a farm on Creek Road in Alexander, naming it Somerville. In 1850, Burke received a telegram from P.T. Barnum, inviting him to join a concert tour with two well-known Italian artists as the supporting cast for the world-famous soprano Jenny Lind, who is also known as the Swedish Nightingale. He would tour with Lind through 1851 and invited her to stay with him at Somerville between concerts. The room where she slept was kept for many years as the Jenny Lind Room. The group was later joined by a pianist named Otto Goldschmidt, who would marry Jenny within a few months. Jenny's marriage to Otto left a lasting impact on Joseph. It was believed by many of his family and friends that Joseph was in love with Jenny. They would continue to exchange letters until her death in 1887. Joseph later spoke of a visit to the Goldschmidts in England when he told Jenny, If I had thought you would marry a mere musician, I would have proposed to you. Jenny answered, Oh, why didn't you? Joseph would never marry, believed by many because of his love for Jenny, and seldom played the violin that she gave him, as it brought back too many sad memories. However, Burke did keep an autographed picture of her and her family close at all times. He would never lose his love of the piano and continue to play and improvise new pieces. As time wore on, Burke transformed into a less active life and stepped farther away from the stage, though he never left it entirely. His efforts shifted to the support of the arts. He was a leader in the, establishing the New York Philharmonic and served as its president three times. Burke also became a distinguished teacher of pianists and composers, even teaching Winston Churchill's mother. Upon retiring, he would spend his summers in Alexander and the rest of the year in New York or Washington. While at Somerville, he would take long walks, even walking the five miles to Batavia and back. Burke was well known in the community, and many of whom he passed on his long walks lovingly referred to him as Uncle Joe. And this is what would actually be inscribed on his tombstone when he passed away. Joseph Burke died in 1902, 15 years after Jenny, and he was buried with another gift from her, a gold signet ring. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of our Artifact video series and learned a little bit more about Joseph Burke and his connection to Jenny Lind and P.T. Barnum and the uh, connection of the arts from here in Genesee County to big cities like New York City. Uh, but uh, as always, be sure to check out the rest of our videos on our YouTube channel, Holland Land Office Museum. You can check out uh, the rest of our Artifact Video Series playlist. Uh, there's over 90 videos now, so there's plenty of material to check out. And if you like any of them in particular, be sure to like and subscribe as it helps the channel out, but also gets you notified sooner once we uh, release new uh, material. Um, but as always, be the best way to learn more about the history of Genesee County and what we have here at the museum is to stop by and see us in person and we'll be happy to share even more stories uh, about our artifacts and the people that have lived here in Genesee County and made a significant impact.